Okay, we are here live. This is Silicon Angles, the Cube. This is uh, IBM's Information on Demand. We're back in Vegas. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. I'm joined by my co-host Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here to bring you two days of action right now at the center of big data. We're calling this Big Data Week because we're here at IBM's Information on Demand, and then we're going to be jetting with the Cube on the Team 2 in New York City for uh, Hadoop World and Strata, which is going to be a lot of the developers and a lot of the emerging companies. But here, this story, this story is all about IBM. IBM's transformation over the past decade has been phenomenal. And uh, Dave Vellante, my co-host Dave, um, what do you think about I, IBM I, IOD? John, welcome back to Vegas. <laughs> I think this is our uh, 15th time in Vegas this year. I'm not sure exactly how many, but it feels like we live here. But yeah, I, IOD is IBM's big IM information management conference. A lot of software content, uh, a lot of, of, of really system software and, and expertise coming in around big data. And we're going to hear a lot about that this week. Now, John, we were at IBM Edge earlier this year, which was the storage conference, a much, much smaller event. Uh, this morning, I was in at the keynotes, uh, listening to Jason Silva and some of the IBM executives kick things off. Big crowd, it felt like I was in the Boston Garden for a playoff game. Um, really packed house, band going, very high energy, lots of you know, data themes. So Dave, we're seeing, we're seeing the transformation of, of the big data world. Hadoop started out in the emerging Apache Foundation, emerged out from a developer standpoint. And then over the past two years, uh, three years now, our third season covering the big data, uh, sector, uh, it's really now mainstream. IBM really puts an exclamation point on that because IOD has always been called, it's been a software information management kind of show which has you know, been part of the legacy of com the computing industry but now the notion of big data is transforming businesses, the discussion of business value, um, IBM is, is, is positioned well, Dave. We know about the storage kind of reconfiguration, the reorganization of storage. You're seeing things like Tivoli, we talked about that at IBM Edge, but now we're seeing IBM take this messaging and the positioning of big data and integrating it directly into their core products and services, and uh, this is going to be a real boost for the industry and for IBM, in my opinion. So I want to get your take on this and ask you a question. Uh, so looking at IBM's performance in the stock market, obviously strong. Um, get your thoughts on that, and relative to big data, Obviously, this is not hype. IBM's not a real big hypish company. When they go for something, it, it really is big business. So what's your take on IBM's decision to really amplify and, and put a stake in the ground with big data? Well, the history here, John, is, as you well know, IBM had the, <clears throat> the biggest monopoly the computer industry has ever seen. You know, back in the mainframe days, it, it had 50% of the industry's revenue and about two-thirds of the industry's profits. And then, you know, the, it's all very well documented. IBM transitioned really into, into software and services, services in particular, but also software. IBM made some very important and strategic acquisitions over the years, starting with the likes of Lotus. It bought companies like uh, Cognos and, and many, many others that we're going to talk about here. And the decision to do that was really to, to drive value for customers. It was the executive management's decisions at IBM that, that software really was the mainspring of value, how to connect IT infrastructure to business value through business processes, it's really through software. So the company became really astute, you know, one of the best, we've talked about it many, many times here on theCUBE, Oracle, IBM, we certainly put EMC and VMware up there, making that transition to a software company. And, the, and, and IBM is a free cash flow machine. Last year, for example, you asked about stock market performance, IBM outperformed Apple in the stock market. That's how well IBM did. Now recently, IBM's been dinged. The stock probably hit close to 220, if not 220, and then it's pulled back to under 200, largely because people are concerned about growth. Well, there was a lot of euphoria around IBM, people almost obviously thinking that it would just wouldn't end, and I think this is a really good, healthy correction. You need this every now and then in the market, but IBM's a very stable, very solid company. Leads with services, drags a lot of software. You know, hardware is you know, a piece of the business that's still very important, but in my view, it's secondary to the, to the software yeah. value that IBM delivers. You know, Dave, one of the things I'm really interested in, I'm gonna, we're going to explore this here on theCUBE, and then we're going to go to New York and, and hit the emerging segment around uh, Hadoop World and Strata, is, is you're seeing software being a real differentiator. And if you, if you look at the shows that we've done this year, just to name a few of the notable ones, obviously Hadoop Summit in June, Oracle Open World, EMC World, VM World, SAP Sapphire, you're seeing the big guys really embracing what businesses are looking for, and that is a, is a complete transformation of how they deploy IT and leverage information, in this case data. So big data is top of mind, but cloud mobile and social has been a key trend, and that truly is changing the infrastructure 
as well as the applications. And you know, Mark Andreessen wrote uh, uh, from uh, a venture capital firm in, in Palo Alto, wrote in the Wall Street Journal about software eating the world. And what's interesting to see is that is that the, the the database market, which was once a very boring market, is now on on fire. And you're seeing that that notion of big data really enabling this. And, and, and IBM has roots with DB2 and databases and a lot of history there. And you're seeing again a cyclical trend that we've seen at least a three other times in, in the computer industry, and that is the movement to specialism and specialty databases, databases enabling a whole new set of applications, and then that moving into more of a general purpose landscape where you're seeing general purpose uh, solutions on top of which starts out as specialty. So Hadoop, all that stuff going on, we're covering HBase, uh, TenGen, MongoDB, is really about specialism, but now you're seeing that move to software and general purpose-like capabilities, the integration of SQL and NoSQL, structured and unstructured data. And the implications are, are grand, I mean, privacy, um, <laughs> user experience, application speed, et cetera, et cetera. The list goes on and on. Every vertical is impacted by big data, and, it, and the root of that is the database, software, applications, and user experience. So I'm really looking forward to that this week, and I think you know, that's something that we're going to keep our eye on. And I'll say we, we covered pure data, recent announcement, pure systems, and I'll say with big data here, it's going to be pretty exciting here at I, you, IOD. You make a great point. I mean, the database market, you know, five, seven years ago was kind of really boring. And of course, DB2 and Oracle, they really own the trans action-oriented databases. Yeah, Microsoft SQL Server to a certain extent, but for the really big, hard problems, it's, it's those two. But now, all of a sudden, this spate of NoSQL uh, activity has occurred. We're going to talk about that a lot you know, here at IOD and also next, uh, this, later this week at Strata. The other thing I want to mention about IOD is, you know, we've seen companies like EMC really transform its marketing. They came out with the cloud meets big data you know, trend, and a lot of people have followed that trend. IBM is not to be outdone. IBM, probably the most famous tagline in the computer industry, and I tweeted this out earlier today, is think, right? Thomas Watson sort of created that. You remember the famous you know, nameplates or you know, stands all over people's desks? Think. Think big is the theme of this conference, and there is just a whole sea of information flowing around, around big data, and the whole Smarter Planet initiative is really a, a, a yeah. big branding theme. IBM really is, is you know, number one you in, almost, in that world. You can almost take that metaphor and say think, okay? Ask a good question and get the answer. That's what big data is all about, it's asking questions. And you know, we're going to ask questions this week on theCUBE and uh, hopefully get some real big insightful answers. So uh, looking forward to it. Yeah, good, so, so John, let's go into our first guest. Uh, we've got Tom Deutsch, who is uh, Program Director for Big Data at IBM. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna get right into it. So first of all, Tom, welcome to theCUBE. Great, great to be here with you. Good to see you, we're just kicking off uh, day one for us. Now you've been here since Saturday. A lot it's, of it's been a long on, week right? already. Yeah, so. <laughs> How's the voice in the, in the desert air? Yeah, hanging in there, hanging in there. So. so my first question to you is obviously, uh, we're kicking off the show, obviously a lot of people are buzzed, but um, comment on your view of IBM's position in big data and what you're seeing. What's the big IOD vibe here for the show? Obviously the messaging around big data. Could you add some color to that? Sure, you know, I, I, I view this as a marathon, not a sprint, right? Um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, obviously, focus on, on people that are fast out of the blocks, but what we're finding here, and, and ConocoPhillips was a great example of this in, in our kickoff this morning, is that um, you know, these are real enterprise applications that, that are emerging, and those real enterprise applications uh, have real enterprise attributes around them, right? And so the race isn't necessarily to you know the the uh, you know the first person to get to the hurdles, right? You have to clear the hurdles in good form without tipping over other apple carts. So I, I think um, what we're seeing here is really a maturation of the space into real productive business outcomes, right? We're moving past playing and what I call exploratory analytics into real production use cases where the rest of the enterprise matters, right? And you're driving real enterprise outcomes, and that that's a different space for the for the big data. Yeah, let me ask you. Follow up on that because this is interesting because we've been covering this is now our third season. We're at Hadoop World uh, when it really kicked off and uh, been part of that whole emerging Apache Hadoop community. Yeah. And you know, history always starts out emerging, right? You yeah. have developers, you have some open source in, in this generation yeah. where you have specialty solutions. And then it kind of gets into it gets everyone's attention. And a lot of people have said, "Oh, cloud or Web 2.0 before it, cloud now big data yeah. are hype cycles." And obviously, right. people talk about the, the hype cycle, but really, this is not so much hype. There's a lot of meat on the bone here, as you mentioned. It's really kind of hitting mainstream. 
Talk about the dynamics and your experiences, watching it emerge out of the emerging uh, Hadoop community. Uh, obviously with cloud, developers are engaged. You kind of have a perfect storm mm -hmm. uh, with big data. Just, just right. share what your observations and experience over the past two years have been. Yeah. So I, I think we're, we're early days still, right? The, the, uh, uh, the, the Apache community, not just in the Hadoop space, right? Because big data is more than obviously Hadoop. But the Apache community as a whole has, has been just, I mean, the track record of, of doing phenomenal work here has just really been uh, you know, fantastic to, to participate in and, and leverage and, and uh, work with our customers around. But I, I think what we're, we're finding is that um, th there's still a lot of hype in the market. And one of the things that, that I, in the you know, couple hundred engagements that we've done with, with our customers that I've, I've personally been involved in is um, uh, it, there's a lot of bad guidance out there as well, right? So, so in, the, in the rush to keep up with the hype, we see a lot of companies rebranding what they're doing for the last 10 years as big data now, right? And there's one <laughs> database vendor specifically that, uh, you know, if, if, they, if they stamp their, you know, their unchanged code base, you know, that's 10 plus years old, as big data one more time, I'm going to, you know, probably vomit. Uh, folks, that would be Oracle that Tom is talking I, about. I, I, I can well, say I, it, you I did not, but, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm Oracle. neutral here. <laughs> we <laughs> love Oracle. So for the, um, <laughs> yeah. so, so the key is, is to um, look at this in, in what I call the, the evolving fit for purpose architecture paradigm, which is, you know, the answer used to be a database how could you shrink and beat your data into fitting it, right? What, what, the, what the NoSQL and, 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 and the not only SQL movement has allowed us is to really look at developing a fit-for-purpose approach, which is to say we're going to match the compute problem to the best underlying compute technology. And what comes out of that are, are areas of being um, a really, uh, you know, not only a compelling fit, but really breakthrough analytics. And uh, that's really, uh, I think, one of the big themes out of this is that we're not talking solely at an infrastructure level, right? That's important. It's really the business outcomes that are driving this. And what I've personally seen in, in the last, you know, uh, well, I've been in the space now for almost five years now. But what I've seen in the last, uh, really, 18 months is just transition from exploratory systems to how does this fit with the, with the enterprise, right? And that, that theme of enterprise is going to keep coming up here over and over again. So, so John, I, I think what I'd, I'd say here is that um, you know, as this matures and it moves from emerging to more mainstream, the, the considerations around what it means to be mainstream and what it means to be reliable and what it means to be integrated uh, is, is going to be a, a very important uh, next step in the evolution of the technologies. So, Tom, you talked about what we sometimes call uh, big data washing. You yeah. know, remember we had cloud washing, now you got everybody's yeah. now get big data. <laughs> but there seems yeah. to be, with a lot of the traditional companies, and I'd love to get IBM's angle on this, the notion that, okay, uh, Hadoop is batch, we're real time. Yeah. Um, does IBM subscribe to that? What's your angle on that? Well, so I, I think there's, um, uh, again, in that fit for purpose notion, right? You, you use the right technology for the problem at hand. And, and we, uh, you know, Hadoop has a batch model, right? It's how it thinks. What we're seeing is that um, starting to uh, uh, kind of morph into uh, uh, bimodal ways of working with it, right? So there's certainly a lot of work happening and more of this is going to happen and be announced at Strata around making Hadoop uh, much more interactive uh, without requiring, uh, you know, a batch only interface. Um, uh, the other thing what we're seeing is uh, as, as people start to realize that big data is not just a dupe, and again, a fit for purpose architecture paradigm, is combining in motion real time analytics, streaming technologies, specifically you know, including our uh, inf Infosphere Streams engine, working with um, Hadoop, right? So, for example, you, you build your models um, you know, with data at rest offline, you then promote those models up for scoring, right? Or you promote models up that actually change or create synthetic data flows, right, in motion, in memory, uh, and then those funnel back into Hadoop systems, and the Hadoop systems then run analytics and low latency off those that then promote models back up. It's actually something that we call adaptive real-time analytics. It's that interplay of truly real-time systems uh, with uh, at-rest data systems, whether they're, they're Hadoop or otherwise, that create these kind of very dynamic, very um, uh, adaptive uh, information flows. And I think what you're going to find is, is, certainly it's something we're pushing on, but in the industry as a whole, is that you know creating a silo, which may be very, very good at something, that doesn't help vector actual customer experience or, or manage risk in real time or, or cut down on fraud uh, is useful, but is going to be essentially a silo that doesn't live up to its potential. So it's how yeah. it interacts Tom, with everything. Tom, let me ask you something about Hadoop, because obviously I'm from Palo Alto now and I've been out there 13 years from the East Coast, and I heard a comment last night uh, having dinner with and, and talking to a bunch of folks, oh, Hadoop, that's only for the people on the West Coast. <laughs> um, and, and it, but the point, the point being that, you know, in the real world, New York and other places where, yeah. you know, there's some serious mission critical systems 
systems. Yeah. Hadoop is not viewed as like the big data solution. So right. two things, one, um, comment on Hadoop's role in the big data ecosystem in your view, right. um, and how kind of the normal business IT, CIO, people who are running applications used to have in the Cognoses and the DB2s, they got a plethora of multi-vendor, multi multi-app solutions. Right. How does, explain the Hadoop relationship with existing systems. Sure, well my, my customers uh, on the East Coast and in Europe didn't, didn't get that memo, so uh, <laughs> you know, they're, they're, they're making uh, uh, some, some pretty good progress here. I, I, I think, um, uh, there's a couple dynamics happening, right? So one of the challenges is, is that there is this balancing act between uh, you know, our native tendency to want to collect more data, all data, forever, and uh, frankly, the cost of doing that, right? Uh, there are risks in that sort of approach, right? Um, so one of the things that we're looking at is, is enterprise disciplines around what we call defensible disposal. So hold on to it, preserve it, protect it, actively leverage it for, when it's, for the lifespan in which it's useful, but after that, you want to get rid of it, right? And, and I think that sort of enterprise management um, uh, discipline, uh, frankly, is lacking in the tube space, right? The, the, there's a lot of emphasis on just collect everything and then magically it somehow adds value forever and that's not, you know, as, as you probably intuitively know, the case. The second is that um, as you move uh, away from you know, certain of the, you know, the, the, the big web properties and into more conventional industries, there, in, in some cases, is a healthy um, skepticism about uh, some of these emerging technologies, right? Some CIOs that I work with are less willing to look past the immaturity, less willing to look past a, a lot of the, the what is, frankly, very siloed nature of these solutions, and really demand um, that their business analysts not have to learn new skills, right? Uh, demand that the, the people that are doing information discovery not have to go look for pockets of information here, over there, and then somewhere else. They're looking for the ability to have that data uh, really be virtualized, right? So the people think in terms of the currency of the business rather than in the currency of the technology. And, and there's, there's, I think, something to be said for that. Tom, we're getting the hook from the, uh, the producers, but I want to ask you one final big question. Um, take us through your vision of, of how you see the next uh, year unfolding with big data. Kind of where we are, what inning uh, of the game are we at, and relative to IBM and information on demand, the whole ecosystem that's happening around IBM and outside of IBM. Sure, so it, uh, we're probably in the second inning, right? And it looks like we're going into to uh, you know a double header here, right? So so this is a you know this is just life as we're going to know it going forward. Um, I think what you're going to see in the next year is a real focus on analytics and, and real ROI, right? So moving from experimentation, moving from silo deployments into real run the business sort of initiatives where these technologies are mainstreamed and enterprise class in a sense that they really participate in and, and uphold the rest of the enterprise uh, sort of attributes that uh, existing more mature systems do. Will, will, in your opinion, that analytics movement live up to the, the expectations and the hype as I would say that, let's say, BI and DW didn't live right. up to that promise. Yep. So, um, you know, uh, living up to the hype cycle that we're in right now is, is going to be difficult, right? I think what's going to happen is, is uh, and, and frankly, part of what I view my job and, and, and IBM's job to do is, is get customers through that trough of disillusionment, right, and get them earlier on to that plateau of, of productivity. Um, and a lot of that is knowing not what to do, right? And, and I can tell you from personal experience, I've learned a lot of ways not to do things over the last five years, right? So, uh, so in addition to the, the analytics and, and enterprise uh, character, I think we're seeing a lot smarter project selection. It's something I, I've, I've been asked to, to get, I know I've got like four talks on it here at the, at the session. Uh, so I, I think it's, it's a lot about knowing what not to do. Um, and uh, a lot of that is, is good enterprise management disciplines coming back into this space or being exerted in this space for the, for the first time. Uh, I, I do think in some ways uh, the hype is underdone, right? If you look at yeah. the ability to transform industries, um, and build, uh, you know, so, so for example, in the financial services work that I've, I've, I've been able to do, we're moving from a product-centric approach, which is a Groupon approach, which is I have all these offers, I want to span my customers, right, into a model that says I have a relationship and I will earn money by serving that relationship, right? Sounds simple, but it's a fundamental rethink of the architectures, and that's an area where the big data technologies have a native play, and I think that's actually under-hyped. Right, so 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 yeah, that sort of generic buzz. Big data makes everything better, right? Everything's got to be big data. That's you know BS, right? But the ability to rethink about how you do those sorts of trans transformative um, uh, initiatives, which I think are inevitable, right? As you know, as as we all have experiences on the consumer space that drive what we expect from the companies we do business with, I think big data is actually underhyped. It's engagement-based transactions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, about. Tom, thanks for coming on the cube. I know time's tight. Wish we could spend more time. I mean, this is something that I've been really thinking about lately. Uh, a concept I call uh, data DNA. 
big, you know, as data gets more, uh, as more data comes in, where was your origin? What's the mix as it matches up between two data sets? So it's something that we've been thinking a lot about and uh, looking forward to talking more with you about it uh, inside the queue on our next event and uh, keep in touch. Okay, we'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE in Las Vegas for IBM's Information On Demand event. This is Big Data Week on SiliconANGLE TV. We'll be in New York right after this, so uh, stay tuned to us for all the big data action.